pleasure to welcome you to this lecture by Tanya Stevens. If you were here a couple of weeks ago for the famous lecture by the notorious Mr. Cartel, you would know that this is a different kind of conte context and a different kind of concept. We had a dance hall lecture the last time. Now we're going to have an academic lecture by a dance hall artist. Nobody don't tell Mr. Cartel, so I said, so I'm making go vex with me, because his lecture was really quite informative and entertaining. I have to tell you that I would have preferred to have had this lecture at the Undercroft, but based on the waves of visitors that we had for that last lecture, the university administration thought it would be much better to have us in a contained space where they could manage everything. And you know, I, I just want to say that I'm really sorry that the setting is not as intimate as I would have liked, but I know that Miss Stevens can command a big stage and we will all have a very good time. I want to, first of all, bring greetings from the head of the Department of Literatures in English, Dr. Norval Edwards, who couldn't be here because of um, circumstances beyond his control. And I'd just like to read the message that he sent. On behalf of the Department of Literatures in English, it is my pleasure to welcome you to this public lecture by Ms. Tanya Stevens on the last day of International Women's Month. Tanya Stevens is a fine artist with a distinctive style and witty, intelligent lyrics that express a thinking woman's perspective in a music industry that is too often dominated by macho posturing and gimmicks. This evening, you will have a chance to hear the thoughts of the woman behind the dance hall revolution. The singer whose repertoire ranges from the unabashed celebration of sexual pleasure in Boom Walk, to the profound social commentary of Rosa, a song about Rosa Parks, the black American civil rights icon. Tanya Stevens' songs are simultaneously sensual, and cerebral. She has a lovely line in which in one of her songs in which she invites a man to kiss her mind. And she defies all the stereotypes about dance hall music and female artists. The Department of Literatures in English is pleased to host this talented and versatile singer-songwriter and management study student who will tonight share her reflections on music and society with us. Thank you all for being here. Welcome and enjoy the lecture. Is Cece here? I don't, yes, Cece, all right. Now Cece is a member of the class, the reggae poetry class. And she's also a very talented artist whose songs are bussing all over Europe and Japan. And come, come, give her a big pram pram, man. Yes, yes. We have talented artists students on this campus, you know, we, we have a revolution, a revolution where the artists are coming into the universities, not in the time like when Bob Marley used to say, you know, we have a university that is graduating thieves and murderers. We have a university in which we have talented artists who also want to get formal academic qualifications. So CC is going to perform. But CC, just before you come on, we have another artist whom I just met, Casia from Canada who is visiting, she performed this afternoon at a very important Creole conference. Kesia, where are you? Thank you, blessed love, it's Keisha. <laughs> yes. And it's an honor to be here amongst somebody that I've listened to your music for a long time, from Canada, buying your CDs. It's an honor to be here and to, to listen to you speak and to sing in front of you as well, so blessings. All right, number two, or sorry, number three. These words were penned by Luciano, it's entitled Spring Summer, but I just changed the melody a bit and I put it on an actual hip hop beat um, by an old school hip hop producer, so hope you enjoy it, Spring Summer. Spring from the autumn of winter, I will be on the metro 
Keisha for starting up the vibe so sweet. And may I acknowledge the presence of Dr. Michael Barnett. Um, could you take a bow, Michael? Michael introduced me to her, and Michael has been carrying forward a lot of the work on reggae on campus, the Peter Toss Symposium. He did a very good um, forum on skin bleaching a few weeks ago. So thanks very much, Michael, for the support for the work in reggae studies that's taking place on the campus. Cece, where you there? Come mash it up. Hi. Ready? Okay. Oh, wow. 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 Come on, my boy. Every time I see you, my life's gone by. I can't live, can't live a spark. But why don't you know you want my love, baby? You make my love, baby. You make my love, baby. Every time I see you, face the smile. But I begin to make you so much more. I can't explain the way I feel inside. No way I will feel like I'm rising tide. Bring it back, bring it back. You ain't got to help me, I'm in a lie. It's a traction, it's a satisfaction. Do I be like me, I can't traction. You make me happy. Every time I see my knees go weak. I can't hear, can't take a step. But I don't you know you make me happy. I'm a bum, 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 bum. You make me happy. I'm a bum, 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 bum. You make me happy. I don't know what it is you do. Feel so bad and high, but it's true. No one can come between us two. And I tell them, try to stop me, yo. Pull it, pull it, it bring to life. I'll be my boy if you ever know. This attraction, satisfaction. Baby, do you know you have contraction? You know me, I play. Every time I see my knees go weak. I can't even, can't even speak. Baby, don't you know you want me? I'll be my boy. Why? Because I love me. You 
class and has been a very dynamic member, is here with us to formally introduce Miss Stevens. Now I know everybody is here because we already know about Tanya, that is why we are here. But I think it's still important to give her a formal welcome and Rastakura is going to step up to the mic. Let me tell you another little thing about Rastakura. He makes the most beautiful cane juice. So follow him and find out afterwards where you can get his cane juice. Thanks God for the promo. Give thanks, you know. I am Mr. You know, Mr. Stephen, good evening, you know. It's really a pleasure for me to be introducing you this evening. You know. I am Mr. the power to shape society, Tanya Stephen. Um, most of the information from this introduction is taken from a website named artist, artistnetsingit.com. Beverly Tanya Stevenson, Carl Picard, and so many others, freestyling with, with their friends and carnals. At the second class of seven, seven kids, her musical influence were determined by, by whoever was in the house listening to the music at the time. It was a lot of Beethoven, Smokey Robinson, Bobby Bowie, the Crickets, and all the R&B, or never suggested Calixonians. The Kitchener and Sparrow, that all are the heart, wit, and wisdom. Tara records, I discovered what they were talking about at a really early age, singing on the mic and, and local sound system dance complete her musical education. And it wasn't long before she. Uh, I'm a too close to the mic. Okay, sorry. Singing on the mic and local sound system dance complete her musical education and it wasn't long before she recorded her first track in 1993. It's this for real, include in producer Barry, Barry, Barry Ayers for further East compilation. The tune announced the presence of a certified and conventional artist within a business heavily populated by musical giants. Our ears produced her first album in 1994, Big Things Are Gone, which set off a string of boom shots. The title track, Love All Your Body Tan, Kikwe, and I Bet You Miss Me, had established Tanya as an aggressive competitor, armed with a, go a gorgeous rhythmic alto and a scratching wit. As reggae dancer continues to take over mainstream record charts, the world is coming to know its rhythmic reflection of the young male Jamaican mind. Reggae is a man's world, and singer, DJ, reggae rapper, Tanya Stephen, it that low daughter other girl Pitney, who proved to, to the dance hall fraternity that she meant for more than decorating men's rhymes and smooth background harmonies. Gangster blues. Tanya's fifth CD is raw, rebellious, and authentic, confirming her position at the top of the dancehall game with a vivid display of her wide-ranging musical imagination and keen wordplay. Whether sporting hardcore race rhymes, insightful political statements, or combing or tugging romantic fables, only guts uh, to thoughts come from the truth of this giant talent, you know, and a person could also make reference to Tanya Stevens and compare him with a man like Peter Tash because of her revolutionary spirit. Tanya has, a, Tanya has been a hit maker from ever since she burst in 1993 with hits such as Part Time Lover, Think It Over, Man For Rule, Jaff Your Finger, and Big Ninja Bike. Tanya is about trying to put the gap between men and women and punch at the myth that it's a man's world. She explained, adding, 
I have no problem being a woman, and she loved being a woman, you know? Her early material was lyrically typical of dancehall, and draw comparison with Lady Saw, along with whom she was proclaimed the top female artist in Jamaica in 1998 by the Washington Post, but later developed beyond what she called the same old four topics to reality themes and evil lyrics critical of homophobia. Social scientist Clinton Hutton said of her, she is intuitively intelligent and definitely tackles relevant social issues. Under her belt, she has produced seven albums, with her latest being the infallible, her latest being the infallible Tarantula Records, which was released in 2010. I mean, I think she has more to say about herself than me, so we will end the introduction. And welcome to Anna Steve. Good evening. Well, after hearing the introduction, I feel very, I feel lacking because I don't believe my piece contains as much information. But I want to first thank Dr. Cooper for inviting me and for having me here. And I want to thank everybody who is here this evening um, to share in, in my humble opinions. I've decided not to, not to um, research too much of other people's um, research, <laughs> researches and stick to sharing my opinions and experiences with you this evening. It was really hard to decide what topic I would, I would tackle because there are so many which are very dear to me and, and those of you who are familiar with the many arguments I, I get into, you know what some of my favorite topics are. And music, the power to shape societies, it's not really one of them. It's not one of the more popular topics that I would be would be um, tackling in, in conversation. But I feel like this forum and this evening demands this particular topic. This being the last day of Women's Month, this being a presentation following on the heel of another presentation by, by one of my co-workers, one of my peers. Um, and based on the social climate right now, I thought it would be relevant to provide, um, provide a different perspective from what you're, you're used to hearing from artists. Who let him in? Everywhere I go, I see this man. <laughs> Music, the power to shape societies. I've heard that debated often. I've heard people from within my industry refute that claim. I've heard people say music is not responsible for what is happening in society and musicians are not to blame. And I agree with them. It's not responsible for what is happening and it is not the sole responsibility of musicians to raise our children or to shape our society, but music does have the power to do this. And as a result of having this very important power, it is important that we wield it responsibly. Numerous scientific studies have been conducted without producing conclusive evidence of the exact neurological process by which music evokes emotional reactions. However, that it does affect us emotionally is not at question. From the chanting of Negro spirituals by slaves as a method of keeping the dream of freedom alive and conveying hope, to Public Enemy's 1989 single, Fight the Power, a call to arms in which rapper Chuck B instructed the African-American community to revolt. Music has been an effective means of rallying the masses and creating ideological groundswell. John Lennon's 1969 recording, Give Peace a Chance, which went on to become one of the most popular anti-war songs of all time, signaled the acceleration of a musical campaign 
which was politically influential enough to attract the attention of the Nixon presidency and spark a series of actions against him, dubbed the US versus John Lennon. These events have been documented in the 2006 David Leaf and John Scheinfeld production of the same name. It is incredible of us to accept the credit that comes with sparking social change in positive directions without being willing to accept the responsibility of the part we play in negative trends. I Am Woman by Helen Reddy. I Will Survive by Gloria Gaynor. Respect, or R-E-S-P-E-C-T. First performed by Otis Redding and later made an anthem by Aretha Franklin. Are all songs which spurred women into action and emphasized the need to demand more from our male counterparts. The messages contained within these compositions provided a script for many who had previously been rendered powerless by the inability to express themselves. These are some of my theme songs. These are some of the anthems that I grew up with. I was born in 1973, and I've incorporated them into my life. Many people call me feminist. I'm not. I stand up for myself. I happen to be female. They can be confused as the same thing. Music amplifies and adds urgency to emotions, as evidenced by successful use of love songs to set the mood for our romantic escapades. Artists like Beres Hammond, Freddie McGregor, Marvin Gaye, and Smokey Robinson have provided a soundtrack to countless nights filled with passion. And that's just talking about my nights. The capacity. <laughs> what? You don't have them kind of nights, too. What? <laughs> the capacity of music to galvanize the masses has not been limited to affecting political change or aiding and abetting intimacy. Mention of brand names in the lyrical compositions of popular artists has been instrumental in promoting numerous products to markets in which they had previously been significantly less popular and sometimes unknown. In 1982, them are mad over me. I love that song. A song recorded by Winston Foster, more popularly known as King Yellowman, incorporated words and melody from a local advertisement for Grey's Tomato Ketchup. The song became an international hit for Yellowman, and the advertisement evolved from being a part of a marketing campaign to becoming a part of popular culture and music history, thereby securing the product significantly more relevance than it previously had. We cannot continue to say that we are not responsible for the direction in which our society travels. I'm going to harp on this a lot. Crystal, Moet, Alize, Hennessy. These are just a few of the liquor brands which have enjoyed varying stints of extreme popularity among hip hop, R&B, rap, and dancehall fans after a spate of songs which contain lyrics of applause for these products. I'm going to brave this certain charge of being redundant and mention a few more brands. Donna Karan, Gucci, Versace, Moschino, Louis Vuitton, and more recently, Clarks. All of these brands have received their share of promotion in songs and taken up residence in our closets as a result of this promotion. When artists sing about a product and the popularity of both song and product increase simultaneously within the artist's fan base, the artist being considered responsible for this success by most of us is certain. Members of the music industry have no reservations when it comes to claiming their place at the helm of positive social change or commercial success. Even public acts of charity are often photo opportunities accompanied by exaggerated additions to the bio. We can't continue to say that we're not a part of what is happening and that we don't influence the society. How can we credibly claim the credit for the good we inspire while denying having played any part in the accompanying bad that transpires? Let me make this clear. I'm not suggesting that music is the villain responsible for social decay. It is not. I'm a part of music. I would never accept that responsibility. 
And neither is it the obligation of musicians to cure that which ails us. The job of raising a child belongs primarily to the parents or guardians of the child. And transferring that job to one or more strangers, merely because they are promoted in the media, is careless at best. It is impractical to expect one who operates only under a poetic license to adhere to moral guidelines. However, there is no artistic immunity from our individual social responsibilities. And while music didn't create the problems, it is helping to propagate them. That the problems predate us and most likely will outlive us would be a sound argument if an individual was being charged for the existence of problems. But it falls flat if the charge is promoting them. If someone knowingly, if someone who is infected with the HIV virus knowingly passes it on to another person, the fact that HIV existed before they caught it does not exonerate them of the crime they have committed by passing it on knowingly. The inspiration of one, when expressed publicly, acquires the capacity to become the motivation of many. It is in the best interest of the collective for every individual to motivate consciously and responsibly. When grown women stand before an audience of young people, including impressionable girls, who look up to them as role models and unabashedly tell them in song to depend on external validation, and that their worth is determined by the level of satisfaction men derive from sexual favors they perform. That is exercising the power to shape a society. When women perform songs laced with lyrics promoting the objectifying of women, it is in my estimation far more damaging than similar messages coming from men. While a man's debasing lyrics directed at a girl are merely instructions or in invitations from the outside, coming from a woman to a girl who is seeking to establish her identity. This is precedent set. This is a reflection of her destiny. I have listened with, with concern to females admitting, public, ad, admitting publicly that they don't allow their own children to be exposed to their own music. If you do not think you affect others, others why would you limit your own children's exposure to yourself? When a woman who has been ordained by life itself as the bearer of it uses a public forum to promote through music the taking of life because of sexual preference or orientation, that is exercising the power to shape societies. I don't know if the society that we're shaping is one that we want, but we are shaping it. We flippantly take all of our society's fears, weaknesses, and insecurities we marinate them in our hypocritical morality and periodic piety and use them in song to incite mass hysteria which results in the ostracizing and sometimes harming of those who dare to be different. This is most evident in the ongoing feud between the dancehall and LGBT communities. That homophobia that homophobia has been given a promotion by music is an understatement. Even some of our artists who claim to be humanitarians and who hide behind culture labels promote bigotry and a variety of human rights violations. The music that once gave hope and spread messages of peace and love now merely judges, condemns, and provokes. We all agree that where we are socially is not where we want to be, and where we're headed, if we continue on this path, is not where we want to go. New ways of expressing the same old mindsets will not result in a new outcome. Getting different results requires real change. It, it demands doing something different. You can't use all the same ingredients and the same methods and expect to get a different product. I challenge all of us who claim we want change to be the change we seek by harnessing the power of our music and having it reflect that change. Too many of us are playing victims. I, I cannot correctly sum up how many times we have, I've been in discussions with people within my industry 
and they all express the same disdain for some of the trends that are developing in music right now. Everybody um, describes the, the atmosphere in the music industry like something that is being perpetrated on us by some aliens. We have not done anything at all, we just sat there and our music just collapsed around us. Our society collapsed around us. You have been guilty of this too. Many times I've been asked by, by fans and supporters, I don't even like the word fans, friends, supporters, how can we, um, I've heard a term, clean up radio. I don't think radio is dirty, but I've heard that term. How can we clean up radio? What is played on the radio is not a mystery. Radio is kept alive by the financing provided by advertisements, right? Advertisers want to advertise their product to the biggest audience. You, that's where you come in. You tune in and you listen. You continue to listen. And then we throw our hands up in the air and we look around us confusedly. Like, what's happening? Why is this still going on? Because we're doing it. Remember, the inspiration of one, when expressed publicly, acquires the capacity to become the motivation of many. It is in the best interest of the collective for every individual to motivate consciously and responsibly. It is not my job to raise your children. It is not my obligation. But I plan to be here for a very long time, and your children are going to be running this place in a while, so it, it is in my best interest to make sure that your children will be people I can depend on for safety and continuity. When I started, I told you that the introduction made me feel a little bit lacking. I should have said a lot lacking. My intention is not to sit here and talk at you the whole evening. I really would like to have a discussion with you. So I'm going to move to the next phase and turn this into a conversation rather than a speech. Reggae poetry class, Nikki X, is going to perform. Nikki, where are you? You ready? Well, your, your track and everything, right? All right. Please give her a warm welcome, man. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, everybody. I'm going to do a piece entitled Life, and as Miss Cooper said, I'm going to go a cappella on this one. Life is a thing that only everybody who is alive get a chance to live and they must realize it only come one time. Keep your own because you can't live mine. Have a shine even brighter than the sun. Now we waste no time by you look the day done. Celebrate to the fullest God the Father soon come out when him reach me know me now run again life can change like the season look on it situations good or bad happen for a reason now nah, sell out my friend worse my country that a treason accept defeat your mad call it even Stephen that again is an issue it never stays so I eat never man for you have a woman and no stop to beating life just a flow like the thoughts in my head so I get it so I send it make use before you me will be the ugly duckling make them look get a hook if you're afraid I am I tell you you can I'm fish head. Life is a thing that only everybody who is alive gets a chance to live. They must realize it only come one time. Keep your own because you can't live mine. I fish shine even brighter than the sun. Now we waste no time by you look the day done. Celebrate to the fullest God the Father soon come out when him reach me know me now run. That one and him lie.
case you are wondering, Tanya, go into a couple tune for us. <laughs> <laughs> so these are the opening acts that are building up to the to the big performance. It's just a couple tunes. I remember they don't pay nothing. All right. So before she does the performance, and before we come to the end of the program, we really have this important dialogue because she really wants to have a conversation. So please don't be shy. There's a mic. Step up to the mic. And we have two mics. And I want, who, who is ready? Anybody ready to go? Yes? OK. The, no, there, there's an audience mic there. I don't want, this one right here. Come right here there, right in the middle of the audience. Right there. See the, what you looking for? What you looking for? What you looking for? <laughs> okay, we have a little moment here, okay? It's a moment, okay. She's not looking for the mic, she's looking for something else. It's not the, she's looking for the bathroom people, all right? Okay, this is very funny. Nobody has any questions? All right, I will start with a question. If you want to ask a question, just stand up in the line. Just, just form a line, all right? My question, Miss Tanya, when you were throwing word at some of these ladies who were etc., etc., I thought about some of your lyrics, you know. So what are you going to say? Um, you don't have any of those lyrics that may appear to objectify women. When I, when I spoke about the lyrics, that women sing, which objectify women. I didn't say other women. <laughs> and I am among the artists. So I speak about the artists and I say us and we. I do not distance myself from the problems. I understand that I am a part of it. I, fortunately, for my own posterity's sake, I have been growing up along with aging. Um, I think I'm a much more mature person now than I was when I started singing and I do not apologize nor am I regretful of any of the songs that I've done because everything that I've done to this point has contributed to my being here and my being in this mindset, this frame of mind. And, and it, is, it is not an excuse. It is not a hiding behind. We all need to do things differently. We all say we want a different outcome then we have to engage in different Practices, that includes me. Yes, I have some very racy lyrics. <laughs> I, guess, I guess what I was trying to get at was that I think that those songs are wonderful and I think at a certain level, women want women, it's International Women's Month, women do want to be sex objects, you know? Well, I get into trouble all the time because I said, it, only thing worse than being a sex object is not being a sex object. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So that there's a level of, 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 of bodily pleasure that we sometimes deny when we talk about this um, objectification of woman business. But anyhow, you know that I'm a rebel, so I, I, I'm not going to tell you that you must not take a strong position to say that some of my lyrics were bad. All right? Who is next on the line? Demo one know who we stand, yeah. Spunky, fresh, feminine, new man, yeah. Schools in, pull up a chair and jam, yeah. Make a break it down, give up on a one, yeah. <laughs> How you doing? Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, uh, I'm merely playing devil's advocate because I'm one of your biggest friend right now. But um, I remember when I was interested in music as a young person and wanted to pursue some aspect of it, and really putting my energy and effort forward to fulfilling that dream. And it was very challenging. A lot of people didn't, didn't even know about that side of my life. Very challenging. As a female artist in the business, and I've followed your work, I mean, on every level, from the songs about sex, alcohol, to pushing it to the limit, all of them. Uh, what, in probably a paragraph, would you say separates Tanya Stevens from all the other artists? As a female, and even going into the male category, what would you say would separate you? I think probably the thing that first um, establishes a distinction between us is that 
I do not consider myself a female artist. I, I do not see the necessity of a, of a label, um, such as fem a gender label, because my job is not gender-based. I am an artist. And to call me a female artist really would be to limit me because the pool of females is very small and not very challenging. And this is just an observation. It is not a criti criticism of the other women. It's true. <laughs> and uh, I would go a bit further than that and say I've never come across any man that ever made me feel any strong challenge either. So I think probably that separates me. I'm a different animal. I exist in my own space. I, I, I orbit my own son. <laughs> Um, I, 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 want to, I want to backtrack a little to my and Dr. Cooper's um, like a exchange. Um, I think we, we would need a whole other, probably we need to go on a retreat to get into all the different songs and which ones I would consider something that perhaps I wouldn't do right now um, at this, at, at this uh, stage of my development. It is not about the sexuality in my songs. I'm not ashamed of being a sexual creature. I, I love it. You know, I don't apologize for, for being sexual. I'm human and that's a part of my nature. It, the, the objectifying of women that I talk about is the material possessions, the need to look a particular way, which when I just came into the industry, for fear of drowning, I just swam with the tide. And, and whatever was, I don't apologize for it, but whatever was the order of the day, I pretty much partook in it. I tried to put my own twist on stuff and tried to inject messages into it, but the topics were pretty much the same. You, if you look at them, you'll notice that for most of the, the, the sex that I talk about, the sex is actually the magnet, if I may use that term, to, to pull the listener to hearing about the other stuff that I have to say. You know, ready for this yet, was my defiance. Um, you know, I, I was frustrated with hearing all these men in the studio boasting about getting on a track talking about lasting the whole night and having the biggest member and, you know, I ran into some of them on a personal level and, it, and quite frankly, I've never evidenced any of that that they talk about. <laughs> So, <laughs> and, and so, even though it was still sex, I was actually trying to infuse some amount of reality, you know, into our sexuality. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Um, I find it funny that you say um, you're one of the perpetrators, you call yourself one of the perpetrators of music that objectifies women sexually. Because as far as I can see, um, you're more one of the artists who empower men sexually, you know, to make us, not to encourage us per se, you know, to me, you have to have a mind of your own and, understand, and an understanding mind when you listen to your music. To understand that you're not necessarily encouraging us to be promiscuous as men are, who, those men who tend to be promiscuous. Not all men are promiscuous, <laughs> but not necessarily encouraging us or saying that we should be as such, but to acknowledge and realize that sex belongs to us as well. The pleasure of it, you know? belongs to us and because then again too it should more belong to us because we're the ones who are multi-orgasmic anyway you know so i really believe it should be ours men have to train themselves to be multi-orgasmic whereas for us it, it comes naturally you know so i see you more as an empowerment to us so i really would like for you to tell me where do you see yourself really um you know, objectifying us. I'd really like for you to clear, me up, clear that up for me because <laughs> I don't see you doing that. So tell okay. me where do okay. you think you do that? Obviously, obviously, that the objectifying of women, which I do believe exists 
within my songs uh, have not, has not had a negative effect on you. Um, even though I have, a, I have a very healthy ego, I'm in love with myself. And I would love to stand here and praise myself the whole evening and say, you know what, I did this and I did that and, and I am the voice of women. And I've never said I was. You know, I am, I am very normal and I have done all the things that on some level that I see need correcting. The, I, if, I, if I were to get into that, then I'd have to start listing out the discog discography and, and it would really be time consuming. But even one? Who in here remember bookshelf rhythm? Yeah. Oh, the rhythm go. I try, I try, I try remember the song for it, but no set objective. <laughs> Girl from your heart, steer heart, make sure you're looking fine, cause you know I feel wine, for make a man want climb. You know that song there? Yeah. Within it has lyrics which say, take the money, walk the man, <laughs> <laughs> buy the clothes, make him buy the clothes. It, the thing is, it, it, trust me, it's my lyrics, and if I tell you that it exists in there, trust me. I have written most of it, like 99% of the songs I sing, I write them. So if I tell you it's there, it is there. The issue is not whether it exists or not, because we know that whether Tanya Stevens sang songs which could have negative effects on us or another artist did, did it, the fact is that we have affected each other, both positively and negatively, but the negative effects seem to be outweighing the positive, and we need to correct that. We can't correct that by passing the blame. We can't correct that. We've, we've seen a lot of artists try it, come out and, and get righteous and amount to not very much more than laying down a new set of commandments and telling us how to eat and dress. And it didn't work. We, if we're going to correct whatever is going wrong, if we, if we agree that it's going wrong, then we have to grow past the passing of blame and seek ways to seek new ways to go about our business in, in, in creating the kind of society that we claim we want. So don't worry about if Tanya Stevens is guilty or not because Tanya Stevens can, can survive any punishment that she has elicited <laughs> for herself. And I'm very happy, my, my happy. I'm thankful that I haven't had any negative effects on you and possibly not anybody else here, but my fan base consists not only of adults who have the capacity to discern between fantasy and reality and good morals, bad judgment, but my fan base encompasses age groups from kindergarten, from prep school to golden age home. And I have a responsibility of answering to every effect that I have on every single one of them. Not just any particular group. So you know how to deal with the thing and you know for going out the video lights and you know how to differentiate. But others there are others who don't. You know, I don't sing to kids anymore. There was a time when I might have been booked for a, bar, a high school barbecue and I would have done it. it. It's been years I stopped doing that because I realized that my even though we tend to criminalize words, my contexts are very adult. And even if there are messages within my music which can, be of, which can be of value to the listener, children don't always have the capacity to get that. Yeah, respect. Um, I'm just glad that the lec this lecture is actually a lecture and not, you know what I mean, right. that type. No, no, I, I must stress that because... You see, when I was, this is a forum set for you to ask questions and find out, you know what I mean, the responsibility of music, you know what I mean, and the topic is a very significant topic. But, you know, and I've listened to your music over years, and I should say, she, maybe she don't pick up the, the, the areas where, you know, you did those songs and whatever, but I think the key responsibility lies within that balance. You understand? And a lot of people might look at it and say, um, you don't have to 
whatever that but you know what i mean it's our culture and even the dance all that we we, 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 we we fight so much whatever is a, a, a part of our, our culture a significant part of our culture but i want to know as an artist i want to know from you how do you create that balance in terms of the music do you have your own control over your music and stuff like that that allows you to create that balance Right? Because I know that with young artists, one of the things that they don't have, why they end up going that way is because they don't have, sometimes they don't have the tools or whatever, whatever. So it's just to get a, catch a hype and then create the music that you really want to create. If I go to the studio, I know this, if I go to the studio to create a one-drop song, I go and spend the whole day. And then me have to go mix it. Then me have to go do all, you know, people who are artists understand how much I have to go through to create the, the real quality type of music. So what allows you to create that balance and do um, the music the way in which you do your music? Uh, let me see if I can break that up in a few, few different. Um, I have been a part of my production process. Or I have been directing my production process for the past pro perhaps around 10 years, or pro probably a little bit more. Um, I realize that when I'm on somebody else's time, when I'm in somebody else's space, then they have the authority to, to dictate what I do. And so I bought my own equipment. Um, it's, it, might sound like, it might sound like a luxury and like a great investment, but trust me, if, if some of us just um, bypass the rims and the, the liquor in the club in the night, we realize that a little inbox don't cost much. And it, what, it, what it did was not only, not only um, put me out of reach of somebody else dictating my music, but also gave me more time and space without the financial constraints. You know, when you book the studio time, you're limited by how much money you have to spend on the time. At home, I'm only limited by how much of JPS light I can run up before them cut it off. So I can work for the whole month <laughs> until the bill comes. <laughs> and let's see now if I remember the rest of it. <laughs> How do I balance right? Thank you, Dr. Cooper. How do I balance responsibility? You mean of the messages? Um, hang on. It was a little see with me, because it was a little bit long winded, so I have a lot to remember and I'm an old woman now. My memory is not that good. Remind me the balance part yeah. of it. Um, I was speaking about the balance in terms of um, the, the dance hall, popular culture versus your responsibility um, musically, you know what I mean? The type of music okay. that you want to make versus the popular well, culture. You, well, if you have control over your music, you, you'll be able to, to reduce the amount of um, influence um, that is hard over your production of your music. Um, besides that, you know what though, I think we tend, I think I said it earlier, we tend to play victim too much. If you write your song, and you sing your song, I don't know how you can, you can just throw your hands up and blame somebody else completely for your song being, being something that um, you're not entirely proud of. You know, you, you still have some amount of control, even on other people's time. My, my thing was a little extreme. I wanted to sing songs like, Do You Still Care? And my dancehall producers would not have released that. So it, uh, my, my situation is different. All right, thanks. Minnesota, let me answer your question. <laughs> hey, <laughs> good <laughs> evening to you. Um, evening. I'm probably one of your biggest fans here this evening. I mean, my friends. You look little though. <laughs> take it as a fun to comment on my page if Tanya Stevens is the only song that I know and I must say that you're sort of a mentor to me for the music industry because I also do um, songwriting as well and I must tell you that I respect you as an artist I don't think that there needs to be an apology for any song that you have ever sing because as an artist I respect the fact that you are a realist in what you do and that you are not living in a false consciousness and the songs that you write about are just as real as it can get and the freedom of expression which, with which you write and just pushing everything um, that you do to the limit. 
and knowing that you just you only answer to God. Um, I mean, my question might not be specifically in keeping with the topic, but as a young songwriter, I think that I sometimes I, I've been limiting or holding back myself out of fear of exploitation going into the business. I mean, um, sometimes females might be exploited in the market. So what I want to know from your wealth of knowledge is what would be the uh, best advice that you would give to a young female who is a songwriter going into the business, or not just female, um, to sort of minimize then, so to speak, the exploitation um, that is out there, the best approach in that regard. A songwriter who doesn't perform her own lyrics, so somebody who... No, perform, and uh, record sing, them. A singer-songwriter? Yeah, yeah. Sing, sort of sing J.R. Mm. What kind of advice would I give? First of all, let me address the exploitation part of it. Um, for 20 years, I've been in this business for, I think, about 20 years. Of course, you know, some, some other time, I thought I was in the business, but other people didn't know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, what I have experienced might, might, might um, not be taken too kindly, but honestly, I've come across a lot of females who have approached me and, and requested mentorship. And what I've, come, what I've, what I've observed is that most of the reactions that we get from the men, if it, in terms of sexual exploitation, which is what I hear a lot of complaints about, we often, and let me find the best words now, because I don't think, I don't think anybody has the right to exploit anybody at all, but we as individuals have the responsibility to put ourselves in the best positions conducive to our well-being. We cannot leave our safety up to the, the safeguarding of ourselves up to others. What I've seen is that females have approached me wanting to work and wanting me to, to guide them into the industry. And for the most part, probably about 80% of them didn't have the product that I thought I could endorse and still maintain my credibility. That was the first thing. Secondly, perhaps another 10% out of the 20%. Well, how much can I say? 80%? I'm not good for math. <laughs> <laughs> perhaps another the half of the rema remainder um, have bought into the, the marketing campaign of other artists, have bought into the marketing department of our industry. Unfortunately, marketing and sales departments don't have no communication between them in our industry. So when girls have been convinced that if they look good, they're cute and sexy and dress nice and, you know, can gyrate, then that would be the ingredient that would make them a wicked artist. And they walk into a studio projecting sexy, sex and sexuality and you have to you have to acknowledge that even though it is a workplace, the man that you walk in there and see sitting around the mixing board is a man. And if what you come in there selling is sex, I've heard females say that countless times, sex sells. Sex sells. Sometimes I buy it on TV. <laughs> sex does sell. It's a thriving industry. But we are not in the sex industry. What we sell is music. <laughs> sex sells if you're Hugh Hefner and Pamela Anderson and them girls. Eh? But if you're going to sing, music sells. That's what you need to have as your mantra. And this is what I've run into. I don't know what your particular story is, so I can't really speak on it. But from my experience, every time I've heard that somebody was exploited, you know, we tend to get some grandiose idea of, of stardom, instant stardom. We love this term, overnight success. When we walk into a studio, we feel like, all right, I stand behind the mic and I sing a song. Tomorrow I'm going to be a star. And so we feel exploited from that angle. That is getting past the sex thing. 
We feel exploited commercially because we think that we have completed our recording and we haven't seen any returns coming from it. But you know, we can only earn our sales. So even if your song is playing on the radio every day because your friend is a disc jockey, it doesn't mean you're a star and it doesn't mean you have a hit song. You know, marketing without sales is useless. So first, you know, you're going to have to, you have to, mm. <laughs> I have to pick my words carefully, you know, because every time I state an observation, it gets interpreted as a criticism, which is unfair to me, it really is unfair to me. But I believe our women have, have for too long used gender as a crutch, and I don't believe gender is a crutch. I believe my gender is, is actually the engine that drives me. I don't know many men that could have gone through my life story and, and not be at the back page already. And my book is still going. You know, so I don't use the gender thing. So I think if you start off, if you start off telling yourself that you're a female artist and how are going to do this and we females need to do this, and we feel, then you already start off at a disadvantage. You need to go into the business as an artist, if, it, if that's what you, songwriter, artist, and keep working on your craft, keep honing your craft. Never, ever, ever buy into any of the praise that you hear, never. No matter how credible it seems, be thankful for it, appreciate it. Allow it to motivate you to continue, but never buy into it. Don't become your biggest, biggest fan. Love yourself, but don't become your biggest fan. Keep working. Don't ever think that you're, you're too good to be rejected. Don't think that your work is too, is, is too good to be rejected because it, it's not necessarily as good as you think. There have been times when I recorded something and I thought, boy, why this never get played? Why this? And when I listen, when I listen back to some of the things that I did 20 years ago, boy, I just threw my hand up and laughed like, what the hell was I thinking? You know, and, and back then when somebody would have said, this is garbage, my ego, I get bruised. You have to actually be able to entertain the thought that you can stand more work. We can't always improve. Times are changing and new topics are coming about and new ways of expression. So we constantly get outdated and we have to constantly update ourselves. So you can't ever think, Yo, how much things we going to already without even separating them? I lost myself. <laughs> but it is important that you actually know that this is something that you're pursuing. And if you are successful at it, you are going to be the one who benefits most. So you have to be the one who puts out the most effort. Work. The man, them, when they want to bust them, sleep all in a studio yard. No, I not suggest you do that, because that's dangerous for you. But the men will stop at nothing to get on a track. Women, stop. Women, stop. We, we stop. We don't have the patience often, you know. We want to go home and do things more maternal, more feminine. But when you're working, you know, when you, when you, if your pipe spring a leak and you call for a plumber and a woman comes, you're not going to look on the pipe and say, oh, I, I wonder if she woman it. You know, you want to make sure that your pipe is properly fixed. It have nothing to do with our gender. And you're going to check and see if it's still leaking when she's gone. You know, and if it's not leaking, then it, it was a job well done, right? Not a, it's not a female job well done, it's a plumbing job well done. Hopefully, somewhere among all of that, you can find some of what you're looking for. Sure, and thanks. <laughs> you're welcome. Good night. Good night, Barry White. <laughs> Blessed love, Tanya. No. Um, my, my, I'm a, I have a two-part question, if that's okay. Now, before I get to that, I believe that, you know, a lot of us here can agree with me that over the years, music has definitely lost its way in many shapes and forms, right? Um, due to the generation, you know, um, what it is that they sing about, you know, the brands, the glimmer and the glamour, all of that. But as a vintage artist, 
because that's what I call you, a vintage artist. Yeah. You're not old, still look great, but you know. <laughs> As a vintage artist, you know, um, overlooking everything where the music is going. Now to the questions. Where do you see yourself in the next 20 years in terms of the music? And do you believe that you would take part in bringing back the music to, you know, its original way? I just, I, I just asked the two questions. Okay. Well, All right. Let me First question, where do you see yourself in, in the next 20 years as an artist? And would I take part in the Let me take the second part first. Okay. I can just answer that in one word. No. I wouldn't take part in bringing music back to anywhere. I believe we should always be progressing. I don't see any reason for us to go back. The things I love, the things that I can relate to from my teenage. My daughter is here. She's going to be 17 in a little while. Okay. I'm not young. <laughs> the things that I used to listen to. When I was going to, she, we, incidentally, we went to the same high school. And when I was going to high school, it was Tiger. It was Admiral Tibet and Admiral Bailey. And I didn't love Tiger. I didn't need to go no further. When I play Tiger for my daughter, she can't relate. Apart from Puppy Love, which I'm a favorite Tiger. She can't really relate. She comes from an entirely different era than I am from. I make, every day I poke fun at her, and I tell her, I said, the whole of them are idiots. But that is just all in good fun. I would not want to limit her to my teenage experiences and deprive her of the ability to, to grow like I did. You know, I would not want to limit the younger musicians coming up now to the same experiences that I had coming to music or the same expressions that I use. We should always be growing. You know, it is a, I find that it's a little bit selfish. I've been hearing many of these conversations going on and people saying, boy, we need to bring back the music, bring back. I don't think music went anywhere. Music, the music is reflecting the thoughts and, and the culture of this generation. Stop trying to relate to it. No, this is me reminiscing on attitudes People were being willing to sign an autograph, regardless of how your music sound and regardless of what you're singing about. Being appreciative of the, peop the, 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 the engine that drives you, which is you guys. If you don't buy my music, if you don't pay to come into the concert, I don't exist. I don't know how we got up on this high house that we got up on and started thinking we were stars. Stars are celestial beings which are there before we are born and they'll be there when we leave. None of us are stars. We are people working at a job and making a decent living and have a lot to be grateful for. We're not a, half as grateful as we should be. Now, I believe that my, my adolescence, of course, was the best era since recorded history of <laughs> the existence of mankind. That is just my belief. I'm not going to limit anybody else to that. You know, this is what I go and think about when I sit in my rocking chair. Later on, I'm, I'm boring my grandchildren with it. You know, this is my personal experience, the farming of me. I will not project that onto anybody else. You know, so these, these kids make music now, they infuse it with everything. You know, if you don't like what they're doing with the music, then you don't like what you've been doing with them. Mm -hmm. Because they are expressing the way we've raised them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I say leave music alone, it's fine, and 20 years time, I'm going to be sitting in a rocking chair telling my kids that my music was the best. <laughs> because, you see, there have, there have been many recent arguments about who's going to be the next big thing out of Jamaica. And foolishness. That has been, you know. We can't predict that. That is foolishness. We shouldn't even have those arguments. How can you predict what people are going to like? That is true. You know, it's not, it's not something that you can look at and use your own preferences to determine that this person deserves commercial success or, or wide-scale popularity. That's you trying to, to force your preferences on me. I've heard us do it all the time. You know what's funny to me? I read an article in the Star, I think it was, some years ago. And they were trying to predict who would be Sean Paul's female counterpart on the international scene. I nearly died laughing. 
I nearly died laughing. One of the journalists who made a prediction was actually a friend of mine, dark complexion, hella smart, who predicted, I think, four, four females and said they would be the next to hit it big because they have that look that the world is looking for, that European look. Now, I've been to Europe and I've even lived there. And I want to tell you, them brown girls, eh, is nothing black girl at the shit. <laughs> In Europe, when, when I lived there at least. <laughs> I have I've, uh, been signed to a major. I saw, I saw a kind of appreciation for our African heritage from be, being displayed by people of other races that I don't see among us. So we need to stop predicting and just go make some good music and sit down and just stop the noise. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Um, so that means I can't ask two questions? Okay, That's my one. first question is, my first question is, um, where's the book that I've been told you, you'll, be, you'll be publishing? <laughs> The book. She said she was publishing a book. Uh -huh. I've yet. Okay, the book not done yet. Next question. Done. Okay. The other question is: I've listened to Gangsta Blues Revolution, Infallible, and I noticed a theme. You always speak on being accepted or wanting to be accepted, and you always, I think, yes. You, I can name a few songs. Tell me. Um, Let me see if Mister where I come from. There's one of the songs they say, um, "Can you accept me just as I am?" And you think that's about me wanting to be accepted or it's about me trying to change your perception of our relationship and your importance to me? Well, um, I, I wasn't thinking of it in your perspective. I was thinking what maybe, you're, have to be no, maybe, you're, <laughs> maybe you're writing on like the general, as you say, perception and maybe there are some right, people... I understand there. what you're saying. It's, it's not from... It's not from a... a, a, a lacking of self-worth or needing external validation or anything like that. It's the intention, I think you're talking about, do you still care? And the, in, the intention was to invite you to empathize and to reevaluate your importance to others around you. You know, to not see yourself, yourself as somebody who has the authority to dictate what other people may or may not do, inviting you to just simply accept them. You know, if it's something that you're allergic to, then stay away from it. But respect and accept it. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Well, you're you can, welcome. You can. The book, not done yet. But procrastinate. It's a good name, procrastination. We change back the name. <laughs> yeah, we, I'll, I'll be very quick. Tanya, I detect in listening to your music a very strong and what I consider to be necessary critique of Christians, church, traditional morality. <laughs> if, you, if you could, just share with us a little bit of what's behind that, because it's, what, uh, it's a critique that I appreciate a great deal. Oh, man. That's my favorite can of worms. <laughs> <laughs> no, this, um, I think I can, I, can, I can explain that quite quickly. Say that um, I have respect for everybody's beliefs, by the way. I think everybody has a right to choose what they believe in. And if you need a belief system um, to, to feel valid, then by all means, choose one and feel as valid as you possibly can. I want that for you. In the same breath, I do not subscribe to deity. I don't subscribe to religion, and I don't feel the necessity for religion in my personal life, or organized religion. Um, I invite people to look beyond it. Even in your subscription, still look beyond it and entertain the, the thought of, of um, somebody else having another mindset than yours, um, which to them is just as valid as you think yours is. 
and having the respect for them that you demand for yourself. Um, looking beyond, Lord, you see, we should, have, we should have just started out with this and stayed on it the whole day. <laughs> I, I tried to spark discussion in the hope that if there's anything I can possibly impart, you know, then fine, but I also want to learn. If there's anything I missed along the path to my conclusion, then I want to be brought up to speed on it. You know, and this is why I explore it in songs all the time. I, I, I invite people to look beyond that, to look around, because we keep looking up for somebody who defies gravity and sits up there and judges us from a chair and has a big book and it's going to burn us in hell, even though it's made of love, pure love. And I invite us to look beyond that and see the possibility that that could have been limiting our ability to communicate more effectively with each other and to arrive at more sustainable ways of, of living and sharing this place in peace. Um, yeah. Good evening, Tanya. That's a nice segue to my comment. I will be asking a question, just um, a comment about something that you said in the presentation. Um, there has been generally, both in the practitioner community and in the academic community, a lack of internal debate or internal critique on certain very burning issues. And you mentioned the issue of homophobia and the, the, the antagonism between the LGBT community and the dancehall community. I'm wondering um, to what extent that antagonism is happening because we have not generated within the communities, both the practitioner community and the academic community, that kind of engagement. What we have been doing all the time is saying that what the artist does is to reflect, to mirror what is happening in society, but there's no debate. Um, perhaps if we don't have that debate, what's gonna happen is that others are gonna take it up and start debating it, and we're not gonna like what they see. <laughs> you might re respond to that if you wish. Um, but First off, I must say that there have been attempts made um, to spark that kind of debate that you're talking about between the, the two um, warring factions, if you will. And this has been futile. I've been invited um, to, to try and facilitate some kind of, I, I, to, to be honest with you, the first couple of artists I approach and them light a fire on the you. <laughs> I just run. <laughs> Um, but I mean, I've been a part of so many discussions and I've seen errors on both, on both sides, you know. It's, it's, it's like it, you take two very headstrong kids and put them in the playground and only give them one toy. I've seen that kind of emotion from both sides and granted I know where it started, but identifying where it started isn't going to get us away from where we're at. You know, um, we're both making mistakes right now, both sides. And dialogue, yes, would, would play a, a big part in, in, in getting us started on the road away from, from where we are. But I don't know if I, will, if I will say that artists are merely reflecting what is going on in society because I'm, I'm 37, I'm going to be 38 in July. And I grew up in Jamaica. And I remember living in a community within which I could identify, the whole community identified a gentleman who was a homosexual, living in a community, productively working, and nobody ever bothered him. So I don't know that we're actually reflecting the community in so much as we're taking some bits of emotions and we're amplifying them. And we're playing them on loudspeaker and we put them on to melody and, and, and honestly I know that a lot of times many artists get angry with me but I have an obligation to myself to be honest. I have to live with myself and I cannot sit here and, 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 and credibly say that you know this is society is doing. When, when we get up on the mic the kind of authority and power, the, the, the power that we command, should not be taken lightly. Especially when we speak to so many people who are looking at us as heroes and looking at us as shepherds. 
We have a responsibility. It is not the job of the shepherd to lead the sheep to the wolves. It's, it's the job of the shepherd to protect them from the wolves. So you can't just say, boy, you follow me. But you need, you need to put on the staff and step away from the sheep if you can't responsibly protect them. You know, and... Lord of mercy. Tanya, I'd like to congratulate you on your presentation and to make a comment more than asking a question. Earlier, you talked about bringing a certain reality to the sex that you sang about. And I think in your wide body of work, nothing demonstrates that more than the wonderful song you have about what I call the jacket phenomenon. And I'm wondering how at your tender age you had such a deep insight into the subject that took me nearly four decades in my professional life to write about. And I have written a book about that. And I keep getting your song played whenever I, I go anywhere to speak about it. And I think I have to congratulate you on that particular body of work. <laughs> Oh, well, thank you. I don't know. Well, first, I must, I must dispel one line of thought that people have always been asking me. My poor little daughter, everybody thinks that she a jacket. She's not. <laughs> so it's not, it's not from my personal experience, but I observe a lot. And I like, I, I really, I'm fascinated with us. You know, I think humans are the most entertaining animals. And, you know, I'm fascinated with the jacket phenomenon. <laughs> and observation brought me to my conclusion, and, and I can't explain it any other way than, than you know, I, I just think everything we do is so stupid. The way we relate to each other, you know, the way we, we punish each other for mistakes. You know, it's, I don't know, words fail me. <laughs> I mean, words don't fail me when I write about it in songs, so it's good. I want to thank all the women who have ever given jackets. <laughs> My turn. All right. Good night. Um, I really love your music, and I thank you so much for blessing me with it. That's the first point. Um, Secondly, um, I'd like to thank you again because a lot of people chastise me when I say Jamaicans are so hypocritical for being homophobic. And I say they're hypocritical because a lot of the males out here, they have no problem, problems with lesbians but have a problems with males. And I say to them, you know what, listen to Do You Still Care by Tanya Stevens. A lot of people hear me recommend that song. Now my question is, I think you've answered it in part when um, somebody asked about um, music being stagnant. But I'm saying, I'm not an artist, I can't make music. But what am I going to do in the meantime when I wait for you, Tessan, and Queen Africa to make music? Because right now I'm thinking... <laughs> There's a, there's, I mean, music right now, in, for want of a better word, is crap. Who never liked them first, and we never liked them first. Oh, we can't no, listen no. to that. So what am I going to know? What now? No, this is, I, I think, even if I'm flattered <laughs> by your compliments, I, I think it is unfair to all the many, many artists out there making good music who go unrecognized, uh, who exist, who even have hit songs in other countries that we ignore here. I think it is unfair to say that music is stagnant. It's not. It's just, it's probably just going through a phase, you know, like when your daughter reach 14, ask her how much time I have to jump her night. You know, it's just, we, we, it's growing pains. Um, we soon work it out, man. We're hopeful, but I, I wouldn't say music is stagnant. I know there, there's not only three of us, and you left out Etana. <laughs> 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 no, but I, I was just cracking a joke with her. There's not only three or four or five people making music. You know, it, it, would, it, really, it really would be unfair to everybody else who is making music. And, and even, i tell you something though. I think we, we need to get past our practice of condemning that which we think, uh, that, that which we are not in agreement with. Because even though you might not like some of these songs coming out, and, and I, and I want to say one of the most inspirational songs me hear in a recent times is my life soon sought out from G Wiz. To be honest with you, men are really the typical new dancehall fan, you know. But that evoked emotions in me beyond music. You know, just one innocent look at you, just I say my life soon sought out. I can't say music stagnant. That is stagnant. You know, I mean I know that many of us are fixated with a few topics and we, we seem to be Lord, the amount of paranoia where I run around in the studio, them now, it's scary. 
everybody think everybody's out to get them and everybody i don't know what them have for people for hate from them for because you if you don't have no hit song you don't have no money nothing are going for you i do believe if i go and hate from an artist i go and pick usher or beyonce you know i'm not going to pick the artists who aspiring to become an artist <laughs> to hate on i don't know why i would if i if i go and hate on somebody in the supermarket god knows I'd rather hate on the cashier and not going to hate on the little boy who stopped from school and pack out the bag. You know, but Paranaya said, I mean, that, that is something that we can just laugh at. It's not something that we should panic. We, we should cause, you know, we should allow to cause us to panic. Um, it, it's not that serious. It really isn't. I, I don't see that there's anything for us to run screaming for the hills um, about. You know, you, you, you grow past some music. Maybe you mature a little bit more quickly than some of your, your former friends, but you should still allow them to mature at their pace and, and, and like what they like and allow it to exist. Just because I don't like some things don't mean it shouldn't exist because I want my experience to be full, even full of things that I can say, yo, I dash that way. You know, that's a part of my experience too. I learn from the things that I emulate and I learn from the things that I discard. I learn what not to do what not to be. So every, everything out there have a purpose for serve, man. And on behalf of the other artists, them, I ask you to reconsider your position and, and listen to the music then with a different ears and see if you can find some of them. Some of them good, man. Okay, I'll do that and I'm just asking you to sing Do You Still Care, please. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Hi, good night. Um, you sort of touched a little bit on my question when you spoke to the singer-songwriter. But um, an observation that I've made is that I've seen a lot of cliques in terms of the men. Like you have, you know, the Gaza and Gully and Big Ship crew and this crew and all these other crews. But when it comes to female artists, it's a solo, you know, it's Itana, it's Cecile, it's, it's not a clique. So, um, in your presentation, you spoke in terms of your responsibility as an artist um, when it came to your music and like your lyrics, you know, and the messages. But I wanted to know if um, you believe that women, um, female artists, even though you don't consider yourself a female artist, but do you think that female artists also have a responsibility in shaping society by um, helping young um, women who want to be in the industry and, and molding them and shaping them in terms of what they can contribute as well? Um, well, that's a possibility. It's not one that I would subscribe to coming into the industry, but it's a possibility. It might work for somebody else, but I don't know that I want to become the next anybody. So I wouldn't want any, any of the artists existing right now to mold me. Um, I, think, I, I, I think it's, we, we do pretty fine, you know, feeling our way around, you know, babies don't um, hang on to each other. Uh, not, we don't hold our babies and, and teach them to walk. We let them go and we allow them to walk by themselves and, and this is how they develop their own strengths. Um, I think, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with us being apart either because I've seen attempts at females gathering and it ended in so much bickering. They never managed to get into any kind of war with any other group. They, man, they did all the war and right within that one group themselves. So I would say, you know, it's, it's good when we can get together and, and we can work together. But I don't think, I don't think I'm fusing our personal lives and, and our professional lives or fusing or socializing with our, our work is necessary for development. I really don't think so. I think it's important to establish different spaces. You know, I think it's important. I, I, I really am not into the clannish kind of thing. I really love my own space and perhaps, so from my... Per, perhaps the word mold was not the best choice because I, I was thinking more in terms of opportunities like money. Like Vice Cartel, for example, has, you know, Gaza, Slim and all these other females. But I think that, I'm, I can't speak for them, but I'm saying in terms of finance, you know, a lot of females are not making it because they cannot afford to, you know, the studio or whatever, or because they choose not to subscribe to certain, you know, advantages that the men make in order to make the music. So I'm, I was thinking not in terms of molding or telling him who to be, but providing opportunities for
for females in the industry so that they probably don't have to go to the men and, and, and subscribe to those things. That's mm -hmm. kind of what I meant. Okay. I understand. I still, I still do, wouldn't subscribe to that. Okay. You know, um, I can't say that the reason why women aren't more successful is because they don't have a support system. I, can't, I don't know that I can correctly say that. There are many men who aren't successful also, even within support, with, with, with great support from, um, from some of these schools. Not everybody in these schools can, can um, earn their space on a poster. You know, not everybody in these schools is, is significant to an audience. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that. Um, <laughs> in terms of, of my, if I speak from my own perspective, in terms of me molding another artist, I honestly don't think I would want to subject, or maybe you, you don't want to use the word, word mold, but, but you know what, if I am the matriarch for a bunch of girls, Inevitably, my ideology, my mindset, is going to influence them. Um, and I don't think I want to put anybody else through the stress of being Tanya Stevens. And I don't know that everybody is insane enough to handle it. You know, so I think everybody should go and develop their own strengths and weaknesses in their own space. And, and as I was, I think I, I explained something parallel to this to a, a young lady who came up earlier. Um, so failure is sometimes actually based on the, the inability, the, cap, in, the, the inability of the artist to generate the interest. It's not always um, the fault of support or finance uh, or, or anything like that. It, the thing is, there is still success and failure. Not everybody who aspires in any direction not everybody who aspires is going to get there. So we can't keep trying to find re reason and excuses why this person, don't. you know, you hear artists they say, boy, this jockey don't play my tune on the radio. It's not every song fit for go up on the radio. And this jockeys have helped to, to mold me into who I am by, by applying a much higher standard to my work. So I was forced to reach above, you know, to become better. It didn't hurt. Even people who were my friends say, I know you can do better than this. I'm not taking this from you. And I love it. You know, sometimes it really it comes down to the product. You know, maybe the girl who feels like she would benefit from the support system is a girl who really can't sing. And no amount of support system in the world going to compensate for that. Not true. Hi, Tanya. Um, I'm just basically commenting on an issue. Um, last month, I'm a part of a course with Dr. Donna Ho, and there was a question basically saying that um, there are too many men basically hugging the video light, right, basically. So I'm kind of broadening that and putting it in ten, into the entire dance hall arena. How basically, based on your experience, how is it that you think the women are treated in dance hall? Because I think you are probably one of the most underrated artists um, in Jamaica. I think you, basically when you have a billboard and you have artists like Vibes Cartel, and then you put the female artists as if they are basically backup. Basically, I'd want to see more of the females basically being headlined and being um, center stage. How do you think, what is necessary in order for basically women to start to elevate to that level? Because there is the talent, you have you, your Atana, and several other artists, but yet still, if there's a stage show, they basically do not put you center stage. What is it that you think is necessary for you to basically occupy that That's position? really hard to answer, you know, because there's a, I don't understand the concept. Um, I, don't, I don't really understand the concept of you, you, want, you think we should have a bigger picture on the poster? No, no, basically, no, I'm saying... And that, that would make us more significant to the show? No, I'm just saying that um, the talent is there, but anytime I see, uh, I'm, I, I like to watch TV, anytime I see a commercial or a billboard, if there are, you might have a really, really big artist, <laughs> but 
For we some reason, the male is just always there. The male is just always there. So I'm wondering why, why is it that the females right. are just not First of all, in a position? Our intention, and I go and go out on a limb and talk for every artist mm -hmm. who record music. Our intention is to garner sales. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you arrive at that conclusion that I'm underrated when I have some of the best sales down here. No, I'm not. You said <laughs> underrated. <laughs> You see, what you're mistaken, you are confusing the marketing department with the sales department. And the entertainment industry and the music industry are not completely synony synonymous. Yeah, I think the choice is I am not in the entertainment industry. Wrong. And from my observation, neither is Etana, mm -hmm. neither is Africa. We're not, I, I haven't seen any of us show any signs of being willing to go to the great lengths mm -hmm. that it will take to stay in the media all the time. My reasons are very simple. Yeah. If I don't have nothing selling, I don't have nothing promoting. People expect us to be on the front page all the time. I need to breathe, I need to hibernate, I need to reinvent, I need to go home, cook my dinner. <laughs> 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 I don't live in this industry. Yeah. I don't live in this industry, my friends, are not from this industry, I have a life. Yeah. So I go to work and I go back home. I don't live in the industry. Some people choose to do it and they have the right to choose that. But you can't use the fact that they choose to live in this industry to, to validate the worth of another artist or, or to negate yeah. the, the worth of another artist. You know, we, we, we're not entertainers yeah. merely. We're artists and we're musicians and we're writers and we're talent, you know? I right, thank you. I think you cleared up all of that. Um, one more question. I'm a very, very big fan. I've seen, I like your calendar that you did with, was it with fame? I, yeah, I really like that calendar. I think I still have it at home. Um, I know That's that you, you <laughs> <laughs> um, I think your startup business was the H2O. Um, and you, you say write in a book and I've seen you in Royal Palm. What <laughs> other basically avenues are you kind of looking forward to in the future? What other? All right, just to see him like how you see all them things there. Eh? Yeah. When we do the next thing, you're going to see it. All right. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but that's what, the, that's what the poster. You see that calendar? That calendar. But only DJ alone could have made me do that. <laughs> I was very uh, DJ is the only person who could get me to do that. I still don't understand how I do that. I don't, I don't feel embarrassed by it. I don't regret it. I find it hilarious. <laughs> it's not a group if you know the calendar. I'm talking about the fame calendar when I have a little racy outfit. A lot of mercy. I don't understand it, but I mean, it's something that I'm going to laugh about later too. But that's what them calendar no man. No man, you can't do better than that, especially if you don't want to see anything. I'm gonna ask Christopher to come up and make the presentation, and then I'm going to squeeze in Nikki X for one more little tune, and then Tanya. Okay, good night, Tanya. On behalf of the Department of Teachers in English and Prof. Cooper and Ms. Sonia King, I'd like to present you with these two books. I hope you'll read them and enjoy them. And yeah. It's the long and the short of it. <laughs> All right. Nikki decided to pass. Satania so is you now. All right? Yes. And I just want to acknowledge 
Mrs. Sonia King, who came up with, with Sonia, she left, no, no, yes. She's the author of Jacket or Full Suit, which is one of the books that we have given to Tanya. I would just want to big her up because for quite a few years, she was head of paternity testing at the University of the West Indies Hospital and has some wonderful stories. So if you want to catch a copy of the book before she leaves, you can get it. Big respect, Sonia. Well, I'm in trouble. I was just asking for my CD, and it looked like I'm saying something wrong with the CD. No? A cappella? I can do it. <laughs> All right, well, if it's going to be a cappella, then, then I'm going to give you the option to pick which, which song you want me to sing. All right, we can sing a bit of both. <laughs> So them want to know who is Tanya. Me know if I strip for control them man, yeah. Me have the gate, me know the palm of my hand, yeah. Our real domination of the plan, yeah. Check who is Tanya. Spunky fish. Spunky fish. <laughs> School's in, pull up a chair and jam, yeah. Me me break it on, give up on the one, yeah. This is the mother of Kelly, who's a lot past ten. Girl will come for change the whole game with a pen. Me see uncertainty in the heart of men. Show them this is not a fluke, Tanya. Do it again. You, I think you should have come sing it. <laughs> All right, see me, me sing piece of what you want. So the other one was, do you still care? Boy, you know when you, you, know when you have multiple children, you can't pick a favorite. You can't pick a favorite song. But I come close. I have two songs which really try to stick out among the others. Do you still care? No, yeah. man, Cherry Brandy and a song, you know. Cherry Brandy and a song, you know. Cherry Brandy a lifestyle. <laughs> but anyway, you know, I tell you, I love talking. You, know. you see, before I released. Um, which album do you still care to dip on again? Revolution. So when Revolution was coming out, you remember that little, it have a DVD inside of the, the case with the live performance, with the unplugged performance? Yeah. I remember I performed. That, that was a, a, closed, a closed set performance. And there were some journalists there. I think we did it, did it in New York. And it's mostly journalists from among you know, us, you know, or the Jamaican diaspora. And concern, serious concern was raised about me performing the song, Do You Still Care? Um, addressing the issue of homophobia the way I did. And a suggestion was even made that I, I should move from Jamaica before or face the wrath of the masses. <laughs> but you know what? I can't live in Jamaica born and raised a Jamaican and this is my place and me see something I go on with me not like I'm not saying nothing. My mouth too big to stay shut and I believe in order for us to get past the, the things that we have a problem with more of us need to start with more big mouth. All of our mouth big. I'm not quiet now though. I'm not big mouth shit. <laughs> You know, him, him have the right for fe other oh, nothing up here. <laughs> so, all right, I'm going to sing peace. I do you still care? Where Bubba grew up, kept his tobacco chewed up. And when they used to hang ropes, they always kept two up. Had crosses burning all night like the church blew up. If you didn't look like them, they would mess you up. Time passed, and Bubba turned 40 years old. And all them Jack Daniels started taking a toll. Seemed like Bubba was about to make a final bow. None of his friends from the clan couldn't help him now. Family gathered at his bedside, ready to sing the blues. When the doctor rushed in and said, I got some news. The good news is, Bubba, I found you a liver. Only bad news is, it belongs to a nigga. Do you care about the texture of his hair or the cocoa brown color of his skin? And do you still care? Do you still give a damn though you're in the predicament you're in? And do you still care? And does it still mean a lot? No, you're the one who's needing the help. And do you still care? 
Do you still find it hard to love your neighbor as you love yourself now? Tell me, why can't you accept me as I am? Just the way I am. Where bigger grew up, boys were supposed to be tough. Girls were trophies, every man always kept a few up. When he was hurt and the tears would sting in his eyes, his mother said, stop the noise, yeah, girl. <laughs> he learned in order to be a man, he had to know how to fight. Had some very definitive rules about what's wrong or right. Never had the luxury of being able to choose. So to him, for being different, there was no excuse. Bigger was hustling on the corner, making some cash. When he bumped into some beef that he had from the past, he watched the guns raise and the bullets fly in disbelief as his friends all jumped in their eyes. Left him in the gutter, didn't care if he died. He was rescued by a car with plates that said gay pride. It would have been fatal, a shot in your head. You saved your life, though you always said chit chit for dead. Now do you care about the clothes that they wear? Would you rather if they left you there? And do you still care? Oh, what your friends want to think if they see you hanging out with a queer? And do you still care? Does it still mean a lot? Now you're the one who's needing the help. And do you still care? Do you still find it hard to love your neighbor as you love yourself now? Tell me, why can't you accept me as I am? Just the way I am now. All right, my dude. <laughs> hmm? Oi, you know she, you know me in a mob on my serious face and she asked me for me to sing. To the rescue, run away to get them way I stress you. Welcome to performance here around here. Got some girl now be here around here. I want to say this is a rescue. Move up the girl there. Welcome to performance here now. Cause some girl now behave now. Wanna love people, money? <laughs> Which song that? Which song is it? I wish you woulda treat me like a glock. I woulda love it if you keep me punk I wish you woulda treat me like a yacht. Keep me wet while the waves they marak. Why you can't stay up on me like the corner And keep your lips from me like your marijuana I would love it if you treat me like the club Stay up in my whole night Just a bump and grind and rub You don't understand What your woman needs from a man Why you the on the street all the time Just beat us in my hand These streets don't love you like I do. You need for no that. You wanna keep your woman loving you. You need for sure that the love we have where it takes so much effort for bail. Hey, you are bound for blow that. Just like a plain old jersey, you are bound to get true back. <laughs> Thank you very much, and she bowed. Oh. Eh? What well, Dr. Cooper there? Dr. Cooper, she here running thing? When you say, I can't listen to her, I can't make sure running go all right. Dr. Cooper, say, I'm going to do what you say. Not say nothing to you. All right. So you're yeah, running too. Welcome to the club. <laughs> I always start again. Tell me the first time. I forget. Who do you call at two in the morning when you're feeling lonely and you got no friends? Where do you go when you run out of places and the walls of your dreams come crashing in? What do you do when you use all your vices and your only choice is packing it in? Who wants to know that your life is a crisis cause you're paying the prices of living in sin? Nobody wants to know if 
you're feeling down in the dumps. You climb all the way up to the top floor, but you can't even jump no now. Cherry brandy comes in real handy. Vodka, wine, and whiskey go down fine. And if I get lucky, maybe I'll make it to a 40. But happy still ain't no freedom of mine. Ooh, yeah. Well, if my drinking is a problem, if you then. My best friend, I'm Mr. Ray, and him, they few them. And if a Heineken, I freeze me, I rescue them. When it come to passing the bar, I'm not the best student. No. Cherry brandy comes in real handy. <laughs> Whoa, purple my liver. Damn you and your wedding bell. Damn you left me out of your spell. Damn you, you're gonna burn in hell. And if that's what you want, I guess I got what you want, boy. Damn you and your bedroom eyes. Damn you and your believable lies. Damn you, you know you're gonna fry. And if that's what you want, I guess you got what you want, boy. If you believe in karma, then you know what you do gonna come around to you. And the hurt that you dish today isn't free, you gotta pay. <laughs> yes, I'm a good now. <laughs> You're my pastor, my eyes, what may I do? <laughs> you hear Dr. Cooper I ask me to sing? Big ninja bite. <laughs> She wanna want to have a big ninja bite for sure right? <laughs> Just the right one Walk the right gear Boom, boom, all night and all your diver Give me the right slap Cause that girl ain't no care Ninja bike, I want my right bond Just the right one Way up the right gear Boom, boom, all night How oh, am I saying you fi do now? You fi give me some good ride Oh, I am back out the bike and give me some good ride. <laughs> so much. Well, it's a pity. You want to really have a wife. My first but me, I made another money of my life. Rude boy, it is a pity. I want to say, it is such a pity. You want to really have a wife. I may have a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, my life. <laughs> what else? Someone miss, someone miss. I'm reminiscing, reminiscing, reminiscing on all of the long time hugging and kissing. But now you're dissing, you're dissing, you're dissing. Can't place a finger, but something is missing. I miss the days when everything we had was something we could share. And I miss the days when we had time to kill, and we'd kill it almost everywhere. And I miss the boy you used to be long before you got used to me. And I miss the way you used to hold me and make me feel this love. Love don't start a fight. No, and sorry don't make it right. No, I wouldn't be here tonight. If I didn't believe in this love, I want to be with you. Tell me that you feel it too. You have got a lot to do. If you want to be in this love, I'm reminiscing, reminiscing, reminiscing. And when I used to know for sure, but now you keep me guessing. Hindsight keep me looking back and wishing Say foresight would have shown me Say you would have stopped listening I miss the feel of our hearts in competition Racing with every touch back when it was real And now you're standing beside me And I still miss you so much And I miss the girl I used to be When I needed you and you needed me I apologize Forgive me when I say this don't feel like love Cause love don't start a fight No, sorry don't make it right <laughs> Wanna say I'm a free up now? Yeah? Alright, any last request? No, I can't say that. 
One last request. She said one last request. I know my song that. Well, we can't let other people sing to. Well, it's not the way you walk, and it's not the way you talk, and it's not to be the part. Yeah, definitely ain't no movie star, and it's not the clothes you wear, and it's not your nappy hair, and it's not the gangster flicks, baby. It's all about the sex. Me just love off your boom walk. Love the way you walk, yeah. fun, baby. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the main and a quarter to three. Top up what's your score? What could that be more important than me? Top up. You could have digging on me, I got disturbed the peace. Top up what's your score? Somebody please run go call the police. Top up what's your score? Come on now, come on now. You are 50. Lord, oh my God. Dr. Cooper, may I take all of you and send up on the road? Please, a big, 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 big round of applause. Thank you so very much, Tanya, for coming to share with us. It has been a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful moment. Everybody in the class and all the other people them that we met coming to the class, everybody has enjoyed this. It has yeah. just been wonderful. The quality of the discourse has really been great. Thank you very much. I'm going to come back, you know.